Coverage concepts are some of the least discussed but most important aspects to understanding the strategy behind the game of football. Before we take the time to look at any specifics of Adam Fuller's defense at Florida State, I thought it would be worth my time to touch on some core concepts that will make those later discussions go a bit smoother. Let's first start with the most fundamental of all coverage schemes, man coverage. As the name implies, a defender is assigned to all eligible receivers, and they're responsible for them no matter where they go in the field. Because man coverage is inherently risky, man defenders are almost always backed up by deep zone defenders, but we'll get into that a bit more later. There are several different ways to play man coverage, and honestly a whole series of videos could be devoted to just this topic, but I'm going to break it down into two broad categories. First is off man, which places the defender at about 10 yards. This allows for a slower defender, like a safety, to have a cushion for deeper routes, but they can also be useful for shorter concepts. In general, it's a lot faster to move forward than backwards. Some defenders are comfortable trusting their awareness to break on short routes quickly. The second and more common form of man coverage is press man. That's usually played pressed up within a yard or two of the receiver. Notice that no one ever plays in this 3 to 5 yard range. This is no man's land. They're too far to have any real impact on the receiver at the line of scrimmage, and yet too close to have a reliable cushion on deep routes. Not all press man is made the same. In general, a defender has the option to either jam at the line of scrimmage, meaning he gets his hands on the receiver early, or he can do what's called mirror technique. This method is a bit more conservative. The goal is for the defender to mirror the first steps of the receiver and basically present a wall for him to have to run through. A good jam, on the other hand, is supposed to disrupt the stem, or the first few steps, of the route. This can throw off the timing on shorter routes and make it hard for a receiver to find leverage. However, jam technique has its drawbacks as well. Although the ball doesn't go here, you can see how this missed jam gets the corner center of gravity out in front of his feet, which means he's lost from the onset of the play. In general, man coverage is the easiest to diagnose for the offense. Firstly, the defenders tend to stare down their assignments. And if you're still not sure, motion can be a good indicator as well. If the defender trails, it's almost definitely man of some kind. Another potential problem with man is now that the defenders turn their back to the backfield, it can often mean that they have their backs turned when the quarterback decides to take off. The other main category of coverage is zone. What most people think of when they think of zone defense is commonly called spot drop zone. That simply refers to the idea that players have an area that they are responsible for and they drop to that spot once the ball is snapped. Anyone who has played a game of Madden should be familiar with these defenses. The first thing many quarterbacks are taught to look for is the safeties when diagnosing a coverage. They will generally tell you the shell the defense is in and often give a huge hint to the defense's coverage as a whole. Take this look for instance. With two deep safeties, this is commonly referred to as a middle of the field open coverage. Generally, this either means they're playing cover two, meaning two deep defenders, or cover four. The difference is subtle, but in cover four, usually the corners are playing off, and the safeties are closer to the middle of the field. Generally, the weak spots in a defense can be inferred based on these shells. In cover two, there's a big gap in the middle of the field, which eventually led to the invention of Tampa two, where the linebacker sinks a bit deeper into the middle of the field. In addition, cover 2 also presents another gap in what's called the pocket between the corner and the safety. Here's cover 2 in action. Memphis takes advantage of this too high shell by hitting a post in the middle of the field. The other main too high safety coverage is cover 4, which does a better job defending the deep parts of the field, but often leaves holes for short to intermediate routes. Man coverage underneath is commonly combined with a high zone shell, and this can be easily seen with single high or middle of the field closed defenses. The most common coverages here are cover one, which is almost exclusively called man free as you have to play man underneath with only one deep defender as he can't cover the whole field. And then there's cover three. Cover three is probably the most common shell in football. Having only one deep safety allows the other safety to play as a box defender and help against the run while having less deep holes in the coverage than cover two. However, no play is perfect. If you were to guess, where's the weakness in this scheme? If you guessed along the seams or hash marks, then you're right. It can be really difficult for a single safety to patrol both seams. Here you see the single safety in the middle of the field with the corners deep and facing the backfield, 
which is a good indicator that you're seeing zone defense, and therefore it's most likely some form of cover three. Memphis has the right play drawn up, and you can see that the quarterback doesn't spend any time looking at anything other than the seam, which challenges this middle free safety. This core problem with cover three inspired Bill Belichick and Nick Saban to innovate back in the 90s in their time at the Cleveland Browns. They invented a way to play cover three that is able to convert to man when the offense runs four verticals in order to get better coverage of the seam. They call this coverage Rip Liz, and it started a revolution and has since created a whole new category of coverages, man match defenses. Man match defenses look to have the best of both worlds from man and zone. Defenders wait for a receiver to declare where they are going before they take them in man coverage. These can get incredibly complicated and could honestly have several videos to themselves, but to get the point across, I want to look at the most simple version of man match coverage, Banjo. When the offense has a two receiver side, the defense can call Banjo, which means the safety takes the first man inside in man coverage and the corner waits for the first man out. This allows the defense to play tight man without having to worry about pick plays and allows them to adapt to all kinds of route concepts. This evolution has culminated in a whole system of man match defense that Saban refers to as his Cover 7 series. It's named Cover 7 because it uses seven men to always have a four over three matchup or a three over two matchup against spread formations. These defenses allow you to play two separate coverages to either side of the field. These split field systems are becoming increasingly common in the war to combat the spread offense. The final thing I haven't mentioned is how to handle blitzes. There really is two options if the defense wants to bring an extra man in pressure. They can either play man across the board with minimal deep help, or they can play what's called fire zones. These are generally spot drop zones that are commonly named based off the amount of deep defenders. So in this play, Memphis starts with a two high look, but rotates after the snap to a three high coverage. They bring two linebackers and drop this defensive end in coverage, giving them a three over three under fire zone. All right, I think that covers most of the main ideas I wanted to get to. So let's end this off with a bit of a quiz section. Take a look at this pre-snap. What coverage is Memphis playing here and how do you attack it if you were the offensive coordinator? Well, the first thing you should look at is the safeties. With one high safety, they are most likely either playing man free or some form of cover three. If it were cover three, you would see these corners playing back with their eyes toward the backfield. But instead, across the line of scrimmage, you see the defenders head up with their responsibilities, indicating man coverage. So we know we have man free. The final question is what these linebackers are doing. They're either splitting the responsibility for the running back in the backfield or one is dropping into some kind of robber zone in the middle of the field, or they're coming on a blitz and leaving one on an island with the running back. In this play, Memphis brings two of the linebackers and one waits for the running back. Oftentimes, if this defender sees that the running back is in pass protection, then he can come on a delayed blitz, which is often just referred to as a green dog blitz. All right, last play. What do you see here? Now this is a tricky one. Immediately you see two high safeties, so we're thinking either some kind of cover 2 or cover 4. On the bottom of the screen, it immediately looks like cover 4. The corner is playing deep with the eyes towards the backfield, meaning he probably has some deep zone responsibilities. But on the top of the screen, it looks like this safety has half the field deep because the corner is playing tight and face up to the receiver, almost like man coverage. If this were true zone coverage, you could call this cover 6 which just means half of the field is playing cover four with the other half playing cover two. But in reality, this is one of those split field coverages I talked about earlier. On the bottom, it looks like a version of what's called mix in Saban's system, which is basically a type of man match cover four. On top, you probably have some kind of cone coverage where the safety and corner are comboing this wide out, much like the banjo coverage I talked about earlier, except this is for only one receiver. Since there is a form of cover four match down here, once this receiver commits vertical, the safety takes him man on man, while the play action pulls away his underneath help, which makes this out route an easy completion. Now this was just the basics. There's a whole world of coverage concepts that I didn't even touch on. There are zone match coverages and all sorts of ways that coverage interacts with gap responsibilities at the line of scrimmage. I would love to be able to cover these concepts in future videos, but up next is a closer look at how we can use these concepts to understand what kinds of things defensive coordinator Adam Fuller likes to run at Florida State. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope this was informative. 
I hope to get back to more of these instructive videos as the summer progresses. Let me know what you think of them and if you have any fresh ideas of things I can cover next. Thanks.